Back here for the final time on the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. The Philadelphia Eagles, we remain in the NFC East with this team that had a lot of high hopes this past season. You know, after the season that they had, after the season Jalen Hurts had, a lot of people expected them to pick it up. I even thought they they arguably could have had a better year than the Chiefs just at the start, before the season even started. I don't want people to think I'm crazy. Um, But just at the the beginning of the season, uh, you saw basically the same squad coming back. Same, almost the same personnel. Obviously, the two coordinator losses were a lot more vital than a lot of people thought. But just off the thought, I thought same roster. They could only improve, at least I thought, from, from last year with... The idea, the identity they wanted to prove. They went to the Super Bowl and they learned that lesson. And I just thought that motivation to get back was going to be a little bit greater, greater, a bit more of a driving force. But they obviously struggled there towards the end. They didn't have an awful season and they just fell off. But I think they left a lot of people really desiring more um, after after those games that they dropped, especially to some to the Cardinals, the the Seahawks, the Giants. It wasn't pretty there towards the end, and a lot of it had to do with, like I mentioned, how bad they were playing, and once you don't get the results on the field, you start to see some things off the field, and a lot of times people zoomed in and ran with the idea of A.J. Brown having a conversation with Jalen Hurts on the sideline. Things starting to tense up a little bit on the sidelines with the defense, some of the older guys like Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, um, on the O-line as well, you see some frustration. And then maybe even with Sirianni as well. And that kind of all led to people thinking that maybe A.J. Brown could start to think of not staying in Philadelphia, not sticking around because he didn't see any improvement coming along. But A.J. Brown actually called into a local Philadelphia radio station, 94 WIP, um, during an afternoon show. To, to kind of clear up some things on their show last Friday, this Friday, uh, a couple days ago. Some of the quotes that he said that stood out to me were, the first thing he said was, I have no problem. I want to be here. It's as, it's as simple as that. I love where I'm at. It's as simple as that. Next question. He made it pr- pretty clear there. But then they went on with the conversation and kind of dug a little deeper into, you know, the situation with Philadelphia and His reaction to that was, I'm the person you need on this team because I am willing to hold people accountable, make people around me better. But nobody sees that. All you see is little flare-ups. Nobody in the building works harder than me. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Very direct quote from A.J. Brown. And I don't think he's wrong, um, really. I think him and and Jalen Hurts are the two that come to mind where they're all about work. They're all about the team, selflessness to the the epitome of selflessness. Um, those two are uh, to me, and it, it does get to a point where those two guys are the presumed leaders uh, to some aspect for for the offense. And when things don't start to go the way that they expected to, with all the talent that they had, the success that they had last year, it does boil up into some of those conversations that you see that you saw last year on the sidelines, and a lot of people thought it was because A.J. Brown wasn't getting receptions. He was quick to dismiss that as well during the season. And then, you know, he went on that crazy, outstanding streak where he had, I think, a row of six or five games where he had a bunch of receptions over like 100 yards and two touchdowns um, in each of those games or something crazy like that. And, you know, it started to die down, and then when the struggles came up again, the story started to pop up again, and that's when you saw a lot of the attention get put on the coaches this time when it wasn't going right at the end of the season. A lot of it was put on Sirianni, the sort of juggling of coaches that you had from Brian Johnson to Matt Patricia to Sean Desai. It, it, it seemed like, at least the me- how the media put it on TV that you read that, that I saw was... You know, all of this switching and and just mixing of the coaches, it really sh- puts the players in a bad spot because they're not able to 
to first get the communication in order because if you're always just switching schemes and ideas and, and terms, there are so many terms in football, if you're always switching that with each coach that comes in, it's not going to work out. And once that he went into the the Eagles coaching, you know, A.J. Brown also didn't like that, and he cleared it up as well on this show when he said the the players wasn't executing. That's what it comes down to. I think the media kind of ran with the coaches. It was the players not executing. And it just goes on to that point, kind of hand-in-hand with the point I just made. You know, how do you expect the players to execute if if the system's not – is not there in place. Uh, obviously, they didn't switch it up completely because Brian Johnson is basically running Nick Sirianni's offense. So offensively, yeah, there might be some tweaks in there, but it, it's not completely different, which was another issue that I'll, I can touch on in a second. But offensively, it wasn't the biggest issue um, just in terms of A.J. Brown saying that. You know, the player's not executing. You can kind of see where he's coming from there if Brian Johnson is running Nick Sirianni's offense. But defensively, you know, Sean Desai was moved up to the press box, or not the press box, but just up into the sky box to call it from there instead of on the sidelines. Then he was kind of demoted. Matt Patricia came in, and now he's calling the plays. And I I find it hard to believe that Matt Patricia would run anything similar to Sean Desai because it was Sean Desai's first you know, kick of being a defensive coordinator, and Matt Patricia's done it for years and years. He's been a head coach, so you can't tell me they didn't run two different things um, because it that's it, it's just hard to believe that Matt Patricia, with his experience, wouldn't bring in what he believes works for a defense. And that, I think, really derailed this season for the Eagles just defensively. It didn't look at all similar to what they were last year. They had... Some resemblance to the pass rush, but it, there wasn't those gaudy numbers that you saw from, from Hassan Reddick. Montez Sweat really eat not that much as well. Brandon Graham wasn't really getting there. Fletcher Cox wasn't getting there as much. Jalen Carter showed out as one of their rookies, but other than him, there wasn't much bright spots. And then you go further down or further up the defense, the secondary was, um, other than Darius Slay, everybody, it seemed, just, just fell off or... It, it just wasn't the same level, particularly if I if I had to pick a player, it, it would be like James Bradbury. Um, he was touted as being an all-world corner, at least to, to some resemblance to Darius Slay, but this year he was far from it. Then the linebackers weren't really there. Um, just throughout the whole season, they had Zach Cunningham, Darius Leonard at one point, um, the Kobe Dean was the starter, but then he kind of got hurt and never really came back in. It all was too many moving parts, too many um, switching of coaches, terminology, schemes, and stuff like that. The defense was what really suffered at the end of the day. And just, uh, you, I can't see how um, A.J. Brown, obviously he plays offense. He doesn't really know too much of what's going on on the defensive side of the ball. But defensively it all just wasn't going from for the Eagles and you know it kind of hints at an underlying issue that I kind of alluded to at the beginning of all of this before the break that um it's it's almost starting to become like a lack of maturity and a lack of somebody going in there and reassuring everything and being that voice of reason there was a report that I know um was talked about it on, on other shows in this on this network that it was a report that Big Dom, you know, the security guard um, for the Eagles, once he got suspended, a lot of reports were saying that that affected Nick, Nick Sirianni a lot. Um, he he was kind of, as reported, was the voice of reason for Nick Sirianni. He kind of kept his emotions in check. And with him gone, it was also said that Sirianni got into some arguments with other coaches and you know, kind of lost his cool a little bit. And as a head coach, you know, just in my opinion, if that were to be true, I find it hard to be, but if that was to be true, um, you know, running a a team, you can only imagine what the head coach has to do for for that whole team. And if you're 
not focused, not locked in, and just your emotions aren't in check. You're you're almost rattled a little bit by some moments and don't know really how to handle it and don't know how to transmit that energy out to the players. You get so, sort of these situations where the the tense arguments on the sideline, there's no calm voice of reason, it leads to bad decisions, bad communication, no one's on the same page, and then it, it just snowballs into what you kind of saw towards the end of the year with the Eagles. And I'm not saying that's there. Um, you know, I'm not in the locker room. I'm not there interviewing them. You can't, I can't really make that estimation, but just from the outside looking in, if these all these reports were to be true, it just seems like nobody is taking control of, in those moments at least, being that voice of reason, where if you look at other teams, you know, if you look at the Chiefs, you can't tell me that, uh, when Steve Spagnola says something or when Andy Reid says something, he has everyone's attention. If you look at Andy Reid on the sideline, he always almost has the same expression. Nobody really loses their cool over there, at least not on the coaching side. Whereas with Sirianni, I think you've seen him. There's been some moments where just after games against the Chiefs, you see him kind of showboating, um, trash talking to an, to an extent in, in some games. And that just doesn't, it's not the same thing you get with Andy Reid, and it kind of shows in the results that they get at times, but, you know, you it does, it's not a direct correlation, but that's the sort of thing that I'm kind of seeing with the Eagles and these sort of issues boiling over to some extent and leading to, to bad results on the field. And they do have some questions to answer in the offseason in terms of, you know, some of the the coordinator positions, the personnel that they might have to re-sign or not re-sign with some very loved veterans on the team and just among the city and Kelsey, Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, all unrestricted free agents. Um, they have a lot of things to, to iron out before they get back to to the team we saw two years ago when they made it to the, to the Super Bowl, but the way A.J. Brown talk, at least some Eagles fans, Eagles organization can have some rest knowing that, you know, A.J. Brown seems to be really invested in this team and wants to make a change. But it, it really comes down to this, to these other factors that a lot of people don't see, like he mentioned, to to fall in line and, you know, to get past all the little things, these little arguments, and just get back to producing on the field, which is what they were missing at the end of the day, and it just boiled off boiled over into the sidelines and just making the bad sort of news that you don't want to make and just becoming a distraction more and more uh, as the season went on. But again, I'm always interested to know what you guys think. Is that a trend you kind of start to see build with Sirianni and this Eagles team? Who do you think could be the next leader if Graham, Fletcher Cox, uh, these guys were to leave? Um, who do you think would be the ideal next leader, that voice of reason in that Eagles locker room? Um, if you guys show any engagement and stuff like that, let me know. Um, I always would love to know what you guys think, especially with these last topics, trying to make it more of a discussion uh, sort of topic. But with that being said, I have ran out of time for this episode. As always, uh, I want to thank everyone for for joining me today on the on this episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast, as always presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your engagement, interaction always mean a lot to us, so please make sure to follow and like the channel and the show, as well as to subscribe and comment on other plat- on other channels and other stuff like that that you may see in the network. Follow us on the other social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, for more of this sort of content, sports content, that you might like to see. There's also the other programs on the other sports network channel that you can engage with, and even different types of podcast genres on the podcast network channel as well, if you were to go check those out as well. And as always, if you like more of this football NFL content, you could go over to the channel on the Sports Network channel, the Podcast Network channel, see all the individual segments if you weren't able to catch this entire show, or just YouTube shorts that are on there as well that I always would love to see your guys' engagement with. But 
For now, I've been your host, Manny Moradiege. I'll be back again tomorrow, as am I, with every weekday this week and going forward, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, live, always here talking more NFL and more uh, football in general. I've been your host, Manny Moradiege. Wishing you guys a good rest of your day, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go.